I'm so sorry, Ted. You're judging a baby competition. You're not supposed to get them agitated. This happens every time, and I'm sick of it. <laughs> I was just playing with them, Ted. <laughs> With them. You are jumping up and down with them, running around with them, and getting completely overexcited. <laughs> That's why you got sick on me. I thought the standard this year was rubbish. It was awful, all right. A lot of very sloppy babies who looked as though they really couldn't be bothered. And the hairiness of some of those babies. It was a very hairy baby parade. Exactly, Ted. If people aren't even going to shave their babies before they come out. <laughs> Well, normally, Dougal, you wouldn't actually have to shave a baby. <laughs> what the hell? Mrs Doyle, did you put a brick in the middle of the floor? I did. Well, well why? I thought it'd be handy for your paper clips. See, you can put them in that hollow there. <laughs> yes, but why in the middle of the floor? Why, why not on the table? I got the idea from a magazine. <laughs> well, that may be all very well for Will Self or one of those fellas. But I prefer the more traditional aspect of not putting bricks in the middle of the floor. I think in future you should consult me before you... <laughs> <laughs> Mrs Doyle looks very different today. <laughs> Was it definitely Mrs Doyle? <laughs> I was looking for Mrs. Doyle. It is Mrs. Doyle. What? I thought you were Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> now, a couple of nice pints for you. Oh, great. We're a bit low, actually. <laughs> There's plenty more where that came from. I tell you, I shouldn't be here at all. The police are after me. They're not. Yes, I'm so gorgeous, they want to put me under arrest. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm a bit sad at the moment, Mrs Doyle. Yes, I have to go to a funeral. Oh, no, really? Yes, my last girlfriend. She died from exhaustion. <laughs> Mustard, the new milkman. Oh. Yeah, just to over the south side of the island. Thought I'd spread myself around a bit. Mrs. Doyle, you need to do some dusting up in Father Jack's room, and there's a huge cobweb in the shed needs removing. All oh, right, also, Father. <laughs> well, I'll be on my way, Padre. <laughs> Off on my rounds. <laughs> Right, Ted. Looks like an ordinary blackboard, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. That's what I thought. But watch this. You see? You can rub off the letters. <laughs> well, you can do that with every blackboard, Dougal. What? <laughs> this is a very milky cup of tea, Mrs Doyle. Almost an all milk cup of tea. <laughs> I mean, is there any tea in here at all? Well, no. <laughs> Anyone would think you were trying to use up all the milk so that. <laughs> so that Pat Mustard can come here more often. <laughs> Pat's very interesting, though, Father. <laughs> At the weekends, he's a swimming instructor in the pool. 
and he fought in Vietnam, and he's a former Mr. Universe, and he taught Elvis Presley how to play karate. <laughs> it sounds to me as though he's telling you a few tall tales. <laughs> what do you think, Dougal? <laughs> well, Ted, I'm very cynical, as you know. <laughs> place I know but it sounds to me like you're a little bit jealous <laughs> jealous of Mr. Milky Man I very much think not <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing Dougal I was just looking at some of the hairy babies from today <laughs> there's something about them let's see Oh, my God. What? Oh, this is a terrible thing to say. But if you took this baby's moustache, this baby's head hair, and this baby's sideboards and put them together, I think you'd get Pat Mustard. <laughs> Do you think the babies are copying his style? <laughs> no, Dougal, I think it's more likely that, um... <clears throat> that Pat Mustard has been... <laughs> you know, um, I mean... Delivering more than dairy products. No! You mean he's been. Oh, I can't. Oh, oh, oh. He. No, wait, what? He's been what? I think we should do a little detective work. Find out what this Pat Mustard fellow's up to. <laughs> Hello, Father. <laughs> oh, Pat was wondering if he could put his massive tool in my box. What? How dare you? It's too big for the milk float. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> Mrs Doyle, could you leave us for a few moments? I shall, Father. I know what's going on, Pat Mustard. There are some very hairy babies on Craggy Island, and I think you are the hairy baby maker. No, yeah? Well, I think that you would uh, need proof if you're going to make that sort of an accusation. And I'm a very careful man, Father. A very careful man. Except when it comes to taking precautions in the bedroom. No! You, you wouldn't be advising the use of artificial contraception, now, Father, would you? <laughs> yes, I... <laughs> no, I... If you're going to be... I... I of, of course, you... you... Just feck off! <laughs> You'd want to get up very early in the morning to catch me, Father. Very early in the morning. And now, to write Mrs. O'Reilly. Dude, oh, did you get that? Ted, I'll turn up the volume as loud as I can in case I can hear what's going on inside the house. At this level, you can hear a pit. Right. Now we wait. Oh, no, he's finished. <laughs> Shameful. Dear God, disgraceful. Look at that. Have you ever seen anything like that? No, I have not. <laughs> right. How should we do this? How about two pounds each for this, this and this, and a tenner for the rest? <laughs> well, uh, I wasn't trying to sell them to you. I just wanted to show you what one of your employees was up to on his round. Oh, my God! Uh, yes! <laughs> Why? What, what did you think? Oh, I, 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 I completely misread the situation. Uh, but please, this is disgraceful behaviour. This employee <laughs> shall be removed from his job straight away. Uh, thank you for bringing this to our attention, Father Crilly. Hey, you! Who's going to deliver the milk now? <laughs> Actually, next week is a big week for us. We recently agreed to ease the milk surplus problems of the newly liberated Eastern European Republic of Kroptonova by buying 17,000 tonnes of milk from them. 
Pat's sacking couldn't have come at a worse time. God, it's terrible to think of all that lovely milk floating around and going sour with no one dropping it off anywhere. <laughs> I wish I could do it. Well, we could certainly trust you, Father. You are, after all, a man of God. A what? <laughs> a priest. Well, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> but I'd love to be a milkman for a while. That'd be fantastic. God knows I do flip all around here. <laughs> not a bad idea. You could certainly uh, fill in for a while. Oh, oh I'm not sure. Father Maguire has other duties in the parish. Like what? <laughs> and be sure to keep warm, won't you? Dead. Not in front of Mr. Fox. Hmm? And stay on the left side of the road. Duh, I know. <laughs> Stop it. That turns it on. That makes it go. That steers it. OK, right. OK. You're ready to be a milkman. <laughs> you better get going, actually. Milk gets sour, you know. Unless it's UHT milk. But there's no demand for that because it's shite. He'll <laughs> 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 be fine, Father. got very fond of that brick. <laughs> it's a great old pet for him. He doesn't have to feed it or clean it or take it to the vet. Suits him down to the ground. I love my brick! <laughs> ah, that's nice. Maybe we're seeing another side of Father Jack. A more caring, considerate... <laughs> Craggy Island Parochial House. <laughs> father Ted Crilly speaking. It's me, Father. You ignorant bastard. Who's that? Is that you, Mustard? You got me sacked. And now I'm having to yank myself off round the clock because I haven't got any proper sex with girls. Well, if you're going to use that language... No. Don't I help. I've something to tell you. I've left a little surprise on the milk float your little friend took off me. Something to remember me by. A bomb. What? <laughs> a very special bomb. When your little friend gets to over four miles an hour, then the bomb will be armed. But when he comes back under four miles an hour, then... <laughs> Sorry, I lost it there. What happens when it goes under four miles an hour? <laughs> it go off. Oh, my God. Dugan! <laughs> Mrs. Millet, two pints. Two pints. <laughs> two pints of milk. Hands! <laughs> Father! Oh, my God! Two pints. Uh, two pints. Two pints. There you go. <laughs> Bye, then. <laughs> Listen to me. There's a bomb on the milk float. A bomb? Right. 
Who's that for? No, you're not supposed to deliver to anyone. It's going to go off and kill you. Pat Mustard put it there because I got him sacked. When you go under four miles an hour, it'll go off. The bomb will go off. Have you got that? Oh, God, help! I don't want to be a mint man anymore. You'll be safe as long as you don't slow down. Oh, Ted, look. It's a big bunch of boxes in the middle of the road. Just stay over four. An island parochial house, Father Beeching here. Dougal's in trouble. He got a job as a milkman, and the previous milkman has put a bomb on the milk float that will blow up when the milk float goes under four miles an hour. Yes, that is a problem. <laughs> but uh, don't panic, Ted. We'll find a way through it. We've got to do something practical, something that will really help Dougal. Wait, I have it. Today is being offered for Father Dougal McGuire. He finds himself the most trying and unfortunate situation. We pray that God will protect him from harm at this time and deliver him to safety. <laughs> oh, yes. They'll be peeling them off the wall for weeks to come. Mass ascended, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Dougal, there's the roundabout! Just keep driving round and round. Everything's going to be OK. But I get dizzy. Don't get dizzy. <laughs> All right, we've got to come up with a plan. Back to my house and step on us. The idea. It's the best we've had, Ted. Another mass. That's our best idea. <laughs> I thought the other one went very well. <laughs> Dougal needs help, not a mass. There's a time for mass and a time for action, and this is a time for action. <laughs> is there anything to be said for saying another mass? <laughs> Just a small one. Oh, God, I love saying mass. <laughs> Even as masses, there was a time uh, a few years ago we were at the Moscow Olympics with uh, Sean Dre the Roar. Yeah, this is a great story. <laughs> we don't have time! <laughs> it won't take a second. For God's sake, I'll just shut up and help me come up with a practical solution. Tea for everyone. <laughs> Father Beeching. Biscuit or cake? Biscuit or cake? <laughs> Biscuit or cake? Let's see. For God's sake, hurry up, man! Biscuit, no cake! <laughs> You've seen the damage a bomb can do. To blow your face into the side of a tree. <laughs> well, it worked for them, and they saved hundreds of lives. We only have to save one. That was different. The towering inferno was a big building that caught fire. <laughs> you can't apply the same criteria to rescuing a priest from an explosive milk float. And besides, they had Paul Newman and Steve McQueen. God almighty, it's so long since I've seen it, I forgot Steve McQueen was in it. Uh -huh. Wait, I've got it! 
The Poseidon Adventure. What? Gene Hackman plays a priest in it. Well, that was no help at all. He didn't even say mass. <laughs> Come on, let's get down to the roundabout. We'll see if we can think of something there. Oh! <laughs> Feckin' brick! <laughs> Wait a minute. I've got an idea. Yes, gentlemen. Father Dougal is propelling the milk float by exerting a small amount of pressure on the accelerator. If we can replace his foot with an object that applies the same pressure, then I think we can safely remove him from the vehicle. You mean... Yes, we put the brick on the accelerator. <laughs> Dougal! Ah! I've got a plan, but you're going to have to trust me. Ted! I want to be a priest again. And you will be, Dougal. It's not really your type of thing, is it? No, I don't like this job at all. <laughs> all right. When I say step off the milkfoot, you step off the milkfoot, all right? Just brace yourself and keep saying, I want to be a priest again. 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 <laughs> I want to be a priest again. <laughs> step off the milkfoot, Dougal. Dead! You forgot to break! Put it back! Put it back! Run, Dougal! <laughs> oh, yes, I'm afraid you messed with the wrong milkman, Father. Well, if you don't mind, I'm off. Better get out the earplugs, Father, because when that milk float goes up, then we'll hear it all the way to the north. Pole. Dougal. Thanks, Ted. Are you sure you don't want any milk in it? Oh, no, no, no. I think I'll stay off milk for a good long while. <laughs> Why did I ever want to become a milkman, Ted? You should stick to what you're good at, and I'm good at being a priest. <laughs> uh, yes. Ted, it's scary out there in the real non-priest world. <laughs> Dougal, not every job's as dangerous as being a milkman. Anyway, good night. Good night, Ted.